In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate most NINSA indicators on NinjaTrader using the Predator X order entry. These indicators are not all built the same. I don't have access to them because I'm not affiliated nor am I sponsored by NINSA, but you should be able to use these same steps to automate most of these indicators. And these steps will also apply to many other third-party indicators as well. But for this video, we're going to focus on NINSA. So with that, let's get right into it. All right, to get things started, I have this wave trend indicator from NINSA, and we're going to go through some steps to set this up with the Predator. So the first thing we need before we even load the Predator is we need the tag from the indicator. So we have to make sure it is a Ninja Trader draw object. And a draw object usually comes in the form of some sort of a text, arrow, triangle, and you'll be able to tell this if you're able to click on the object itself and you see some dots around it. That's usually a pretty good indicator that we are able to use this with the Predator. So what we can do is just double click on it and it's going to open the draw objects properties. In order to automate this with the Predator, we need the following coded conditions. We need a tag plus a current bar. And the way you're able to tell if this is coded properly is if you look at your configured section, if there's some sort of a text, that's usually the tag portion of your indicator. And then if you look at the number and it's gradually increasing the farther down you go and they're not consecutive numbers, meaning it's not going one, two, three, four, five. These numbers will usually be skipping quite a bit. And this usually means it's attached to the current bar itself. So that means the bar that has been formed at the time the signal was created. So if you see your tag coded like this, that's usually a pretty good sign we can use it with the Predator. Now, all that we need is the tag portion itself right up to, but before the number. So we include everything except the number itself. And the easiest way I found to extract this information is to simply just take a little snapshot. We go to a text copier. And I'm going to leave the link down below for this site, but we can just copy our screenshot. We can upload it. And it's going to give us the tag that we need. All right, so all we need to do is copy the text right up until before the number. We are not going to include the number, just the text. Now that we have that, one more thing that we need is because our tags are the same for the longs and the shorts. We also need to figure out the color that we're using. So for longs, we're looking at Dodger blue. For shorts, we're looking at hot pink. So once we have that, let's go into our Predator and load this up. All right, so I'm here in the properties. Let's scroll down to our auto entry section, custom signals, and we're doing an entry signal for this example. Now for a long signal and our short signal, it's the exact same tag. So we put in the same text for both of them. But now we need a color identifier to make sure we're only entering in the correct direction. So for a long entry signal, that was Dodger Blue. For a short entry signal, that was Hot Pink. And we must make sure we have the correct entry object. In this case, we are using a text. If you're using some sort of an arrow or any other object, you would just select other object. But for here, we're using text. And I'm going to show you the difference between the enter at break of candle after. I'm going to run one example without this selected, and then I'll run the exact same scenario with this option selected. So first, let's just leave that unchecked and let's just create our order. So I'm going to do a quick ATR stop. And I'm just going to set a quick profit target for 0.8 ATR. And we're just going to add another profit target and we're going to trail this with the ATR. And we're going to start trailing once it reaches our first profit target. And just as a bonus, we're going to add a third profit target but for this one, I'm actually not going to do a profit target. We're just going to get stopped out with a trail stop. Again, we're only going to start it at 0.8 ATR once it reaches our first profit target. 
And this one, I'm going to give it a little bit more room. And I'm not saying you have to trade like this. This is just an example. Set your orders however you want. But once we have our order, once we have our signal tags, that's all we need to get things started. So let's hit apply and enable this on the chart. All right, now that we have our strategy enabled, let's first look at our validation system. So here, what we have is our entry signal. That is what we have selected up here. That is the only option that is going to show in our validation system. Now we have the tag that we put into the predator and we have a check mark for each one for the long and the short. That means the predator was able to read an existing object with this same tag. So if you were to see an hourglass in here instead, that means likely the tag is not right. Make sure you check all your spaces or any capital letters, any periods. It has to be exactly the same as shown inside the property. If there's even one little space that's not matching, it's not going to work. It has to be exact. So if you see a check mark, you're good. If you added a color identifier, you should be able to see the color itself as well. So we see a Dodger blue for the longs and a hot pink for the shorts. So that tells us we are good to go. Everything is reading properly. And now we can hit play and see how this works. So I'm just going to speed this up to make it go a little bit quicker. Order submitted. So here we got our short entry signal, so our short wave trend, and it entered short as soon as it detected the signal. Now we have our stop exactly where we set it and our short profit targets exactly where we set them. So again, I'm just going to speed this up and we're going to go through a few more examples. Order filled. So again, here we had another short signal. We entered short. We've already hit our first profit target and we're just letting this trail. Order filled. And as you can see, it's just trailing down exactly how we set it. Order filled. Order submitted. Order filled. Right. Here we had a long signal. We entered long. Unfortunately, we got stopped out right away. But it's just entering long as soon as it detects that signal. So here again, we got our first profit target, but got stopped out on the rest. And I think I'm just going to show one more and then we're going to show the break of the candle option. Order filled. Order filled. Order filled. All right, so I think we get the idea. It's just as soon as it detects that signal, it's going to enter on the next bar. So let's go back into our properties. And I just wanna show the difference with this option of enter a break of candle selected so we can see if there are any improvements. All right, so we enabled the strategy again. We check our validation system. Everything is looking okay. We're good to go. So let's just hit play. Now, this is where the enter at break of candle comes into play. In order to enter short, your entry candle must break below the low of the previous candle. In this case, the entry candle never went below the previous candle, so the trade was canceled. And in turn, this prevented a losing short trade. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it might help in some situations. So again, let's hit play. Order, order filled. So here again, we had a short signal detected and our entry candle did break below the low of the previous candle. So in this situation, we do enter short. Order filled. For the longs, it's the complete opposite. Our entry candle must break above the previous candle. So here we had our signal. This would have been our entry candle, 
but it never went above the previous candle. That means there is no trade, it gets canceled, we move on to the next one. So once again, it helped prevent a stop. And again, we had another long entry signal, but our entry bar did not go above the previous bar. That means no trades. Order submitted. So here, just as a valid entry example, we had a long signal. Our entry bar finally went above the previous candle. So now we do enter into a long trade. Order filled. And you can also use the rev button if you want to reverse your position in the opposite direction, or if you just want to exit when it detects a signal in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to show this as an example. Once it detects a short signal, it's going to exit our current position and enter us in the opposite direction. Order filled. So here we had a short entry signal. Our entry bar went below the previous bar. So it was a valid entry. The rev button took us out of our current position and entered us into the opposite direction. Now that is how we can automate this style of NINSA indicator. I'm going to show you another method. If you do not see your draw object properties like it's shown here, this other method might take a little bit longer, but we should be able to make it work for what you need. So let's go. All right, so here we're back with a different kind of indicator. And the main difference with this one is we don't have draw object signals that we can use with the predator. So if you look at our chart, you can see we can click the super trend, but notice there are dots going all across the super trend. This means that it is a plot and not a draw object. If you were to double click on it, it's going to take you back into the indicators. This means that we cannot use this with the predator, but we are able to modify it on strategy builder to create a signal that we can use to automate. Now, the good thing about most NINSA indicators is they actually give you a plot for the signal itself. If we scroll down to the bottom, you can see a signal trend. For most indicators, it's not the case for all of them, but most of them are going to give you a bullish signal of plus one and a bearish signal of minus one. So I'm going to show you how to modify that on Strategy Builder so we can create our own signals. So let's open that up right now. So you go to New, Strategy Builder, and you're going to come up to this page. From here, just select new strategy. We're going to name this NINSA super trend. Just select next. We'll keep it on bar close. And we're going to go to the inputs and variables page. And here we're just going to say long signal. We're going to change this to a string so we can create our tag. And the default is going to be the actual tag that we're going to use. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to say long. And I'm going to do the same for the short side. So short signal, string, and I'm just going to say short. Now we can get a little bit fancy here and create inputs for all of our indicator properties. So we can easily configure it directly in the strategy properties itself. But I'm trying to keep this video short, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to move on to next. All right, now we have our conditions and actions page, and this is where we can actually make our signal. So first I'm going to create our long signal. I'm going to go to add, indicator. I'm going to scroll down to NINSA super trend indicator, and I'm going to plot it on the chart just so we can see it once we enable this strategy. Now I'm going to scroll down, make sure your parameters are exactly how you want them. Again, you can use the inputs and variables page to add your own inputs here and make it a little bit easier down the road. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as default. Now your value plot, this is important. We have to change this to the signal trend. That is your plus one or minus one. This is what's going to define a bullish or a bearish super trend. 
now that we have that selected, we must make sure it is equals to. We're going to go to MISC, scroll down to numeric value, and we're doing a bullish signal so that it's a plus one. So if our plot is equals to plus one, now we can create our signal. So we go to add, we go to drawing, and I'm going to draw an arrow for our signal. So arrow up, go to the tag, and we're going to modify the string zero for our user input, our long signal. And the string one, we must add the current bar. So again, we change that, go to misc, current bar, hit OK. And the last thing we need is just set the Y axis. This is the actual location where your signal is going to be set on the chart. So I'm just going to go to set. I usually like to do the price, the low of the candle. And then I'm going to change this to ticks. Let's do something like negative 15 ticks. So that just means the low of the bar minus 15 ticks, that's where our arrow is going to be set. So hit OK. Now I can pretty much just copy and paste this set and change a few things to create our short. So just copy it. Let's make sure we are on set two and go back into our indicator. And must make sure again, just double check your value plot is set to the signal trend. It is equals to, and now for our short, it is a negative one value. So we have that. And now let's change our signal to the short side. So for this one, I'm going to do a arrow down. Let's again, change the tag. So our user input, let's do our short signal string. And we must use the current bar with this one as well. And we're going to set the Y axis. I like to do this one at the high of the candle. So I'm just going to say hi, change this to ticks and change this to a positive 15. So that means at the high of the current candle plus 15 ticks. Once we have that, that's all we need. I think let's just compile this and load it on the chart. All right, so now that we have that compiled, I'm going to remove the indicator itself because once we load our strategy, it's actually going to draw these same plots on our chart. I just don't want them to plot twice. So we just remove it. Now right click on your chart, go to strategies, and we're going to find our NINSA super trend strategy. And we're just going to hit apply and enable this on the chart. All right, so now that we've enabled it, we can see our super trend and we can obviously see one problem here. There's an arrow for each single bar that is a bullish super trend and a down arrow for every bar that is a bearish super trend. In most cases, we just want to plot one arrow on our chart for each direction. So I'm going to show you how to change that. Let's disable this and pull up our strategy builder one more time. We're going to go back into our inputs and variables page, head down to the variables section, and we're going to add a Boolean. So I'm just going to say is long and set this to false. Now I'm going to do the same for the short. Just say is short, again, a Boolean and set this to false. Now let's go back into our set one. This is our long condition. So we're going to add another condition that's saying if our Boolean that is is long if this one is set to false, meaning it's not true yet, we haven't found a long condition, but it also detects our bullish signal, then we can draw our one arrow up, and then we're going to change this bool to true. So that means it's only going to detect our true condition once, and then it's no longer going to be able to create a new signal because our Boolean is now true. Now down here, I also want to say, once we have a long condition, we no longer have a short condition. So I'm just going to set my is short, leave this unchecked, and that is going to set this to false. Now, once we have that, let's go to our set two 
and do the same but for the short side. So I want to make a condition. Again, user variable. I want to make sure our short condition before we enter a trade, I want to make sure this is false. Once our short signal is detected, I want to set this pool to true. So set is short, check mark it to turn it true. And then I want to make sure our longs are set to false. That means it's only going to print one signal anytime there is any sort of direction change. So let's hit compile and see how that looks. All right, so again, we're going to our Ninsa Super Trans strategy. We're going to enable it and get rid of this message. <laughs> and now you can see there is only one signal anytime there is a trend change. And that is what we're going to use for the predator. Now, I know we created the string for the signal, but I always, always, always want to make sure we have the correct signal to put into the predator. I see this way too often. It's the wrong tag put in or somebody's using an old template somebody made from a different indicator. So always make sure you check the correct tag for what you're using. So we're going to double click on a signal and here we can see we have a long signal and we have a short signal as well. Now, when we're using strategy builder, be careful of the space between the last character and the number. We must input this space into the predator to make sure it reads it properly. If there is no space between the last character and the number, don't add a space. But in this case, we do have a space, add the space. So make sure we have long space, short space. Now keep this enabled so the predator has something to read once we enable the predator. Now let's go into those properties. We're going to scroll down to the custom signals, entry signal. Now our long signal was just long with a space and our short signal was short with a space. And because both of our signals between long and short are different from one another, we do not need to add the color identifier. We only add this if they are the same. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to use it as an entry signal. I'm going to hit apply and we're going to enable the predator. Let's look up at our top left hand corner for our validation system. We have a long with a space and a short with a space. So we have a check mark for both. We are good to go. So again, I'm just going to play it on the chart to see how this works. So here we're just waiting for a short entry signal. Order filled. All right, there we got one, got stopped out almost right away. That's okay, I'm just showing how this works. Now we're looking for a long entry signal. Order filled. So there Order we got filled. one. Order submitted. And now it's a short. Order submitted. Order filled, order filled, order submitted. And as you can see, anytime it detects a new signal, it's just going to trigger that trade. Order filled. Now we can also use these same signals to filter out other auto entries. Let's go back into the properties and just show an example of how that works. All right, now what if we want to set a reversal entry or an engulfing candle entry? and just have the Ninsa super trend filter that trade out. So we only want to take long trades above the bullish super trend, only want to take bearish trades below the bearish super trend. So let's just set up a reversal. We're going to trade reversals, color the reversal. Now that we have our reversals, let's get rid of our entry signal I no longer want to enter when that trend changes. I only want to use the super trend as a filter for my reversal. So unselect the entry signal and we're going to select the filter signal. Now these filter signals work as an on and off switch that allow your trades to either enter or it prevents them from entering. So that means when your long filter tag is on, it's going to allow long reversal trades or any other auto entry that you have selected. When it is off, 
it's going to prevent long trades from happening. Same thing for the short filter. When it is on, it's going to allow short trades to happen. When it is off, it's going to prevent short trades. So let's set this up. So we want our long filter to turn on when we have a bullish super trend. So we select long with a space and we want to turn it off when we get a bearish signal. So I'm going to say short with a space. So turn on the long with a long signal, turn off the long with a short signal. And now we're going to do the opposite for the short side. I'm going to turn on our short signal when we get a bearish signal. I'm going to turn off our short filter when we get a long signal. So again, it's just an on and off switch that allows your other auto entries to enter trades. So once we have that, let's hit apply and let's enable the predator. And here, let's just take a scroll back. You can see our colored reversal candles, only the bullish ones going long above our super trend are colored in. The bearish ones above the super trend are not colored in because our switch for the short side is off at this point. Now we scroll back a little bit more. When we get our bearish signal, you can see our bullish reversals are not colored in because they are not valid trades because again, we're under the super trend. But our bearish reversals are turned on and we can enter on these bearish reversals only. So I'm going to play it live just so we can get a better idea of how this works. And one thing before I play it live, again, just look at the validation system. We have our filter long on and off. So the first one is what's going to turn on our filter. The second one is what turns off our long filter. And underneath it, we have our short filter. Again, an on and off switch. This is what turns on our short, what turns off our short. And if for whatever reason you want to change the filter direction, you can manually click on these buttons down here and it's going to turn on or off the filter in the direction that you want. But for now, I'm going to leave our long off, our short on, because that is where we left off. So let's just play it and see how this works. So here we have a bullish signal. So that means our long filter got turned on. And because that's the condition to turn off our short filter, our short filter got turned off. And you can always see the status of your filters in the validation system. So right now we are just looking for a long bullish reversal. Order there we go. So there we go. We had a bullish reversal above our super trend with our long filter turned on. It entered our trade exactly how we defined it. So I'm just going to keep playing this. Or order filled. Order filled. So here we had our short signal. You can see our status. Our longs got turned off. Our shorts got turned on. So here we had our bearish reversal with our short filter turned on. So it's a valid trade. Again, it entered us exactly with our conditions. Order filled. Order filled. And that is how we can use Strategy Builder to automate our NINSA indicators. Now, not all of these indicators are going to have this signal option that we can use on Strategy Builder. For example, the zigzag swing indicator it doesn't have any sort of signal of when any signal gets created. So in this scenario, we can't really use this on Strategy Builder or with the Predator. So you are limited to only a certain amount of indicators, but the good news is most of them you are able to automate in one way or another. And the steps in this video should be very similar for most of these indicators. So just pick what is right for you. But I'm going to cut the video here. Hope you guys found it useful. So always take care, enjoy.